Yeah, we've just been super busy lately. Hey, my battery's about to go dead on my phone. Let me call you back, okay? All right, thanks a lot. Okay. What's the matter with you? Chris, the hat house That's a corn is... maze, I know. Uh, how, how did you do You told me to get it ready for Halloween. But it's it's a corn maze. Yeah, I know. You can find anything on YouTube. I just looked it up on YouTube, really? man. How yeah, did you great. plant that like that? It looks real. You know, I have to tell you, I love Halloween. I always have. You see, it's been a tradition in our family to have great Halloween parties because, well, my grandmother actually was born on Halloween. So because of her birthday, we always had a big Halloween slash birthday party filled with all kinds of fun costumes, pranks, good food, and lots of laughs. And of course, when you're having a party, there are the decorations. And I always try to make some of them in advance. Pumpkins are a part of a really big family of plants. They include honeydew melons, watermelons, uh, even all types of squash, including zucchini squash. Pumpkins are also delightfully promiscuous vegetables in that they cross-pollinate with one another, producing all sorts of shapes and textures and colors. I got all of these pumpkins from my friends, the Holmans, and they grow lots of pumpkins every fall. The range they produce is really quite amazing. They called me on the phone and said they needed a bunch of pumpkins, all different varieties, about 12 inches across. And so we all kind of laughed and thought, that's going to be fun trying to find all of them exactly 12 inches across. But we just picked the varieties that were general size to what they wanted that would fit in that pumpkin house. Different size for go around the bottom and the trees, all different sizes for that. So they were pretty easy going about what they got for it. <laughs> We started only with like seven acres and delivering to a few places and then we've just grown a little bit every year. We have a friend that grew pumpkins on a very much smaller scale to raise money for his kids college. And his daughter was about out of college and he asked us if we'd like to go in with him and grow pumpkins for our kids college. And that's how we started. This is a college fund. <laughs> so then they'll be going into retirement fund. <laughs> We have probably 25 different varieties of pumpkin, gourds, and squash. Every year we have popular varieties and we keep those coming back every year. I'm the only girl in this operation, so every year I pick out a few that I think look really neat <laughs> and then tell them that we have to plant them. <laughs> These are the Cinderella's. They're one of our most popular. People love them because they're so round and flat and such a bright red kind of orange and they go really well in stackers. These are our fairy tales. They're really neat because they start out this dark green color and a lot of people actually like to, to buy them green. But a lot of times they'll keep turning and they'll turn this autumn color and they can turn even all the way brown 
and they'll last forever. They, people paint them for Christmas and they last a long time. And then the greatest thing is when you can find a small one that turns all the way brown, they're great for cooking. They're my favorite. Real smooth, thick texture, and it just makes a great pumpkin pie. This is a green Kushaw, and we can't keep enough of these. The people down in Louisiana love to cook these things, and so they've just been selling like crazy. Everybody always asks why we call these lunch ladies, and some people think it's because they're full of warts, but I always tell them it's because you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, we get smooth ones that are all different colors, and we get ones with warts, and they're different colors, and you can just find anything around here. My favorite this year is called the Knucklehead. And not only do I love the name, because I call my kids Knuckleheads all the time, but uh, it's just a really neat pumpkin that's kind of a traditional jack with a lot of green warts all over it, so it looks really cool for Halloween. We start planning usually in late June. We do two plantings to space out the arrival. And then we start September 15th or so delivering. We sell them wholesale to nurseries all over the middle of the state and to pumpkin patches. And it's just so neat when you get a big pile of all different color pumpkins all together and you think, how do they come in so many neat colors and shapes and sizes? Well, it's Halloween again, and tonight our neighborhoods will be full of all kinds of little ghosts and goblins and creatures of the night. But have you ever wondered where those ideas came from? Like so many of our celebrations, the traditions of Halloween are deeply rooted in our past. This all got started with the ancient Irish. They celebrated the end of their pastoral year on October 31st. They called this festival Samhain, and they believe that on this night, spirits came from the underworld and roamed the earth. When Christianity began to influence Irish tradition around the 6th century, October 31st was made into a harvest festival. Celebrate St. Martin. Now the day after this was called All Saints Day or All Hallows Day. So the night before was Hallows Eve or Halloween, a combination of ancient Celtic or Irish lore and a harvest festival. I suppose the real symbol of Halloween these days is the jack-o'-lantern. Its history is also Irish. You see, there was this guy named Jack, and he had a terrible reputation for playing practical jokes on people. And when he died, he went to the underworld, and he dared to play a trick on the devil. The devil got so mad, he kicked him out and made him wander over the earth at night with only the light of a lantern to search for his lost soul. Some say old Jack only had a pumpkin to carry his light in, hence the name Jack-o'-lantern. Now, we also have Jack to thank for the tradition of trick-or-treat because he was such a trickster. Have a safe and happy Halloween. I'm Alan Smith. <laughs> Thank you.
My name is Kevin Delaney, and we're at the Museum of Discovery in Little Rock, and I'm the director of visitor experience. Science is constantly getting us to places we've never been before, and it's important to keep kids interested in it, and young people, and adults too, because uh, how, much, how much do you remember from science class when you were a kid? We're gonna be making some ghost bubbles today, because it's almost Halloween time, and a ghost bubble is a really great science demonstration that you can do at home, because you only need a few things. So we have some hot water right here, so I'm just gonna pour a little bit of hot water into our bucket. And then we have some soapy water here. I used dish soap and glycerin and a little bit of water to make a nice bubble concoction. But if you have bubble stuff at home, you can use that too. What we're gonna be using is dry ice. Now dry ice is not frozen water. Water is, freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but this is carbon dioxide gas, which freezes at a much lower temperature. So it's about 109 degrees below zero. So if you handle it with bare hands, it could hurt your skin real bad, which is why I've got a towel and gloves, just to be safe. I've also got some goggles on, so here we go. So we're gonna just put some dry ice into this warm water right here. We're gonna see what happens. So what we have here is something called sublimation. Now when ice gets really, really warm, it starts to melt into water, but dry ice is frozen gas. So when it warms up, it sublimates back into gas. We don't say melt, we say sublimate. So we have all of this gas right here. Now what we're gonna do with our bubbles are gonna create a little bit of a lid. So I'm just gonna put some bubble juice around the rim here, because we want bubbles, and then water, and then more bubbles. So what you wanna do is just soak a piece of string or a piece of foam in bubble juice and run it across that top lid until you have a ghost bubble. Now this is gonna keep expanding because dry ice expands. It takes up about 10 times more space as a gas than it does as a solid. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. Oh boy. So it's gonna keep growing and growing and growing until that heavy gas gets so dense that it just falls. So it'll drop right to the table. So it's pretty cool. You could do this over and over again. But a really, really fun way to do it is with a special kind of water. Let's hit the lights. So what I have here is tonic water. Now tonic water has a mineral in it called quinine. And quinine is full of electrons that get really, really excited under UV rays. So we have all of our black lights here, so it's glowing. It gives off a nice blue light. So let's pour some into our jar. You can really see that glow, and that's just because those electrons are getting excited and they're giving off energy, and that energy turns blue on the visible spectrum. Put our dry ice in. Now there is your ghost bubble, made all the cooler by that glowing tonic water. Remember, that's just a little bit of quinine. You can get that at the grocery store too, the same place you buy dry ice. And there's your ghost bug. Happy Halloween. Hey, what's a party without great food? I'm here with my friend, Scott McGee, wonderful chef. He's put together some fiendish foods for tonight. Scott, tell us about what we're gonna start with. As the guests arrive tonight, we're gonna have some really nice hors d'oeuvres. We're doing crostini, mm. just whipping fresh goat cheese and spreading it on a little toasted crostini. Very simple. In the late season, I made some Arkansas fig and peach jam with fresh thyme. Oh my gosh. Which is fantastic. Fabulous. And then a little bit of toasted hazelnut over the top, and that's a really nice thing to oh. start with. Yeah, what a nice um, touch, a little yeah, crunch. Absolutely. Marvelous. The main course, Pumpkin turkey chili. Talk yeah. to me about that. I'm a chili eater. Of course, this time of year, everyone's making chili. There's so many variations. Um, especially on Halloween, we want to save a little <laughs> room for all the treats. So so the, the turkey is very low in fat, but also delicious. So it's uh, turkey and pumpkin chili. It has white beans in it as well. Lots of fresh herbs and a little garlic. Mm. Uh, good New Mexican chili powder. And I finish it with a little uh, roasted pumpkin. I also put a little fried sage on it to finish it. It gives I a, a little something different. 
the bat you prepared. <laughs> Indeed. It's enough for an army. <laughs> My goodness. And we're going to finish it off with something sweet, I bet. We have some Arkansas black apple caramel apples mm. um, that are going to be fantastic. We also are doing ginger cake with a little rum chantilly. Mm. Uh, the ginger cake is a recipe from Alice Waters out at, out at Chez Panisse. What a great autumn spring. Indeed, Marvelous. it's gonna be fantastic. I'm thrilled you're here. Thank you so much. Hey, if you're looking for some ideas, check out this recipe. When I have friends over for dinner, I like to do as many things as I can ahead of time, which brings me to the topic of a delicious dessert. That's why I love to serve creme brulee. You can prepare them the day before and finish them off just before you serve them. This recipe is for pumpkin creme brulee. It's perfect because you can use pumpkin fresh from the garden. Now the first thing you wanna do is you wanna preheat your oven to 325. The next thing, it's all about the eggs. You want to separate the yolks from the whites of four eggs. And I just dump all of the egg yolks over into a large bowl because in that large bowl, you're gonna take a half a cup of brown sugar and you're gonna whisk all of this together. Then add about a half a teaspoon of ground allspice, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Here's where you're gonna get the aroma hit. It's marvelous the way this smells. It really does smell like fall. Add a pinch of salt, and then a half a cup of granulated sugar, then one cup of heavy cream. And then the real kicker, the seasonal ingredient. In this case, as I've mentioned, it's pumpkin. And so what you wanna do is you wanna use one cup of pureed pumpkin. Now you can use it from a can, but you get extra points if you use a fresh pumpkin and you get double extra points if you grew that pumpkin. Now if you decide to grow some of your own pumpkins this year, a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. First, kids love to grow their own pumpkins, so keep that in mind. Secondly, they cover a lot of space. Big vines with big leaves produce lots of pumpkins, so you wanna make sure you've got plenty of room. At the very least, plant them around the edge of your garden so they don't beat up all your other vegetables. They're a lot of fun to grow. Now once you've mixed all of this together and you have a liquid creme brulee, it's time to divide the mixture into ramekins. This recipe will produce enough to fill about six to eight ramekins. Now it depends on the size ramekin. With mine, this recipe will only fill about six of them. And you want to take the creme brulee and fill it up to about a half inch space from the top. Next, just place them in a baking dish and fill it about halfway up the sides of the ramekins with hot water. Now you're gonna bake this for about 30 to 35 minutes just until the mixture is set. Then remove the ramekins from the oven and place them just out on the counter or on the top of the stove until they come to room temperature and then place them in the refrigerator for about two to three hours. You want them to cool completely. And here's where you can leave these creme brulees in the refrigerator for up to a week before you use them. This is the beauty of serving these as a dessert. Now when you're ready to serve them, just remove them from the refrigerator and sprinkle about a tablespoon of sugar on each creme brulee. Then use a chef's torch to melt the sugar until they're crisp and dark brown. Now I'm telling you, you're gonna thank me if you make this recipe because it is so easy and so delicious. Give it a try. The Halloween party is going so well. I'm really excited. But you know, there actually is a ghost story associated with the farm. It's about these people who died down on the river and every once in a while they all come back and they haunt. I don't believe any of that mumbo jumbo, but it's a great story to tell. And my friends at the Repertory Theater, well, they do a really great job telling that story. <laughs>
My name is Rafael Castanera. I am the production manager for Arkansas Repertory Theater here in Little Rock, Arkansas. For P. Allen Smith's event, I am one of the creators, one of the writers, the director, and the costume designer, all in one bottle. We didn't want anybody to be terrified. We wanted them to laugh a little bit. Also, we wanted them to be enthralled and maybe feel a little chill down their spine. We wanted to make sure that it wasn't too long, that it was entertaining, that they could follow it easy, uh, and still tell a complex story and a fun story at the, in, at the same time. And it's one of those things, it's a one-time shot that we have to get it right. The final moment is hopefully a true moment of, of surprise that you will be, um, it's definitely climactic. If we, if we can put out there what I see in my head, I think it's gonna be great. I am the storyteller. She has a very certain tone that changes um, from beginning to end. I can't say too much without giving away the story, but it was a lot of fun to see the character evolve and uh, to kind of come alive. In the short little 12 minute segment that we're doing, our technical people probably have more sound cues and more likes cues than they do for a regular musical. I mean, it's jam packed full of special effects and we don't always get to do a lot of special effects like this on stage. Um, so we get to do that. They're getting to have a lot of fun with uh, creating this whole little ghost story in a 12 minute time window. It's been a lot of fun getting to be as creative as we've been able to be. And so being able to start from scratch. There's nobody's ever done this show before. And so you're able to come in with brand new ideas and uh, really try to make something special happen in 10, 15 minutes. So we just want everybody to enjoy it and have a good time and get a little chill bump and, and be like, wow, that was really cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed our spectacular event at the farm, and I hope you picked up a few ideas for your next Halloween party. Remember, get out there and eat, drink, and be scary. Ooh. They hybridized, cross-pollinated, and creating all these weird sorts of shapes and forms, you see. <laughs> how That's a corn could, maze, I know. Uh, how, how did you do You told me to get it ready for Halloween. But it's, it's a corn maze. Yeah, I know. You can find anything on YouTube. I just looked it up on YouTube, really? man. How That's did you right. plant that like that? It looks real. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I love it. Take a look. This is awesome. I think